So, Liverpool are through to the fifth round of the FA Cup. But Jurgen Klopp wasn't there to see it, and of course, all of his first team players were absent. Danny, does this take any of the shine off of the victory, or indeed, does it vindicate Jurgen Klopp's stance? I don't think he needed to vindicate his reasons for not playing the first team with what they've got going on. I don't think anybody had a big issue with that. Um, considering the opposition, the kids he probably felt could do the job, and they've done the job. So, you know, in that respect, I don't think he, he, need, he needs, vindicate, needs vindicating. But in terms of him, himself not being there, I suppose he's got away with that a little bit. I think if, if they'd have lost the game, that would have been highlighted more. You know, the, the fact that he wasn't there as, as, as manager of the football club and to try and motivate the young lads, which he would have done naturally. I think we were talking earlier regarding when you train at a football club as a young lad or play in any game, if the first team manager's there, the intensity goes up all the time. Um, but the job's done, so I think any of these questions now will be nullified and, and I don't think he's going to have... He probably won't entertain too many more questions about it. Yeah. Are you pleased that Liverpool went through? I think it would have been good to see them pay a price for it. And I, I don't think that would have been a bad thing for the FA Cup, to be honest. I think they've, they've shown the, the, the quality because it's, it's difficult for those lads to step into that environment and play and win. I think it's, they've done extremely well. You know, hats off to them. But it would have been a great to have maybe seen an upset. I think it would have, you know, shone, shone something on the FA Cup that, you know, you have to put the right amount of commitment and energy into it if you want to go on and win it. I understand, I understand you. Yeah, I do understand your point, actually. But I think... Are these exceptional circumstances? They are with exceptional. The, with the winter break that has been scheduled. It's very unique. It is, it is exceptional, yes. But I, I'm thinking of the, the FA Cup brand and the bigger games as the tournament goes on when it becomes more serious and more global. But that is the brand. The giant killing is the brand. Yeah. That is the hope. That is the, that's the message that I think the but FA... But would you be right to FA Cup special? Chelsea next against Shrewsbury or Chelsea-Liverpool? Because the, the next <laughs> Liverpool side won't be that one. It will have Lalana in Origi and people like that, yeah. I would imagine. Yeah, no, I, I agree. In terms of a spectacle, in yeah. terms of football in excellence, of course, you'd rather see that. But in terms of the... what You know, you have to sometimes boil down what the FA Cup is. And, you know, we love the grittiness of it. We love the ability for, for giant killings to happen. Yeah. And I think that's what's special about it. So to, for that to happen as often as possible in the FA Cup, I think, you know, can only be a positive thing for the tournament. Yeah, I, I, just, think, I just think it's just plain sad for the yeah. FA Cup. Because the FA Cup is no longer... The competition that it was that is an indisputable fact yeah because if you win the fa cup now you haven't beaten all of the teams because you've only the teams some of the teams in there they're under strength they're weakened teams yeah but they'll get stronger as it goes on and liverpool are still in it i mean shrewsby did have no but whoever wins it danny it, it used to be if you won the fa cup you were the best in that competition you'd beaten the best teams in the land well, not necessarily because if you look at when millwall got to the final they didn't play a premier league team till they got to the final no, but other teams had. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I know, I know, I but what you're saying you're is, is that you're playing full strength teams. Yeah. You're, play, you're playing teams that are going out there with their full strength, full strength team to win the tie. Now, like we said, you don't see that till the latter stages now, really, with a lot of clubs, not just the top six. We're talking clubs that are fighting relegation, you know, Mayfield a team, clubs trying to get promoted <coughs> in, the, in the championship, will field a, a weakened team. But, but we're, talk, we're talking about two things here money. And preservation of players, the physical aspect of players playing too many games is, is what the clubs hide behind most of the time. If, and this is not going to happen, but just bear with me, if you got £100 million for winning the FA Cup, do you think we'd see the first teams rested? Because ultimately it's about money. And, while, and while, while the Champions League brings in the riches that it does and the Premier League positions brings in the riches that it does, and staying in the Premier League, the other Cups are going to suffer. But uh, do you not think, though, that the FA Cup is such... I mean, I love, I, it. I love, I love, the, I love the FA Cup. Yeah. And I, I just think it's sad for the competition that it's come to this. There's also a precedent been set here now. So next winter, if there's a winter break, other Premier League clubs are entitled to look at this and say, well, we'll do the same as Yeah, Liverpool. but not every Premier League club's got the luxury that Jurgen Klopp's got. L L Jurgen Klopp... Is, is doing an unbelievable job at Liverpool. They've won the Champions League. They're, they're going to win the league this year. They're going to have a good chance in the Champions League again. He, he's in a great position to be able to do what he's done. Now, if you look at the other managers going down the table, I, I think a lot of them are... I mean, Steve Bruce, for example. You know, he's played a really strong team tonight mm -hmm. to try and get the job done because he knows the importance to the fans. 
Um, there's a lot of Premier League teams who've played stronger teams than in years gone by in the competition recently. This is, you, you talked about this being a unique situation. It really is in terms of Liverpool's success in other competitions. Because if Liverpool were only a point behind or above City and, and you know, Champions League run had not gone so well, he would have a strong team in this. You, you've got to look at the, t the, the timing as well. Timing. Yeah. The, the, the timing's been really unfortunate, hasn't it? The, it's landed in that w only week that, that the squad and the manager can have a break. And mm. I think, you know, they're 40-odd they're games, competitive fixtures since the first Premier League game of the season already. And a lot you know, of those players early played in February. Summer. It, it, it's a ridiculous ask. And for him to keep mentally preparing game after game after game. I mean, what's that? Eight, it's eight, eight matches a, a month, roughly, that they're playing. Where do you stand on Jurgen Klopp big then or not, Matt? Well, it's, it's interesting how, how you, you use the phrase like get, got away, getting away with not being there. And I, I know what you mean in terms of... I just mean it would have been highlighted. That's, that's what I mean in terms of like the, the players appreciating the fact that he would be there. And I'm sure all those young players would massively appreciate the manager being there, watching them. But on the same breath, he strikes me as the type of personality again, it might be a unique thing, who's got the character and personality and presence around that football club to be able to put the message across in the right way as to why he's not there. But he, he hasn't done that on this time for some reason. Inside might, the club. He might not have done it publicly. Yeah, he may inside well have done the club. It privately. Yeah, yeah, maybe he has. Yeah. It's the only thing that matters, isn't it? That the, the young players know, you know, that... The, He's watching, he knows what's going on. And, and there's all the no, there's no way in the world in that Jurgen Klopp isn't aware of the development of those young lads. He's 100% he's, he's integrated into the club. He knows all the young players, what their strengths are, what they aren't. I've got no problem with the long-term effect of the players into him not being there. I'm on about just in terms of, on the night, the performance of those players being better and more intense if the manager's there. Because as a young player, and I think you agree, when you, when you trained as a young lad or got a chance anywhere near the first team or even reserve games back then and the first team manager turns up <clears throat> it's a big deal you want to impress the gaffer it's a big deal of course now I don't I, it wouldn't have bothered me if, if he wasn't in the dugout necessarily and, and barking instructions but just in the change room wishing them all the best before have a quick word of encouragement would have, would have helped but, sure, but surely your argument is negated by the whole reason that the shadow squad is there that the first team squad are having a physical and mental break. <laughs> that must apply to the manager as well. More so. But yeah, because. Not physical. Me no, no, me no mental. mentally. Yeah. Mentally. But then I've got no problem with him having a break mentally because of the intensity he works with. At, sorry. The intensity he works at. But just say it. Just say, it, I need a break. I'm not going yeah, to the game. I think the real reason he hasn't gone to the game, I, I actually think he probably did want the break, but it's in saying that. You are, you are putting yourself in a position where people criticise you. It looks like, from the outside, that he's actually sticking two fingers up at the establishment for, for well, creating this extra fixture. I, I completely agree, and I, and I don't think it works both ways. I think if he's there, he's hands-on and he does it. If you're going to turn up and be there, manage the team. Take the team. Don't, Which, if you don't can do that, you've got to, after beating Southampton on Saturday, you've got to be with them Sunday, be no, with no, them No, 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 you haven't, because he made a good point about the preparation with the manager who coached them all the time. I understand with Neil that. Critchley. With but, Neil Critchley. But, but also, he had that group of players in, in the, the first leg, and most of the majority of those players, bar a, a few, he had play, a played with him. The first game. He did, but he had the majority of those lads that started tonight yeah. in that game and the previous yeah, game. Yeah, so long term, they're not so, struggling. It, it's, not, no. it's not about his dedication to the young players at Liverpool. It's just about, for me, it's very simple. The impact on the evening, they've won the game now, so that's why it's less relevant. But if they hadn't, I do think the players perform, yeah. players, young players' performances yeah. generally will rise when the first team manager is around, the intensity of their play. I think it's a, it, it's a problem that he feels you're going to give us a, week, a break and then you throw a, a, game, a yeah. fixture into the mm. middle of that week He's got it's very... a message. He's sending a message, I think, as if to say, I'm not going <coughs> to I'm not going to entertain in it, yeah. You, you, you're offering a break. We need this break. The, the English need, league needs this break. Yeah, but the players are having the break and he could have he, he could have flown off after the game to wherever he's going. You know, it, 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 have a, I understand that we've, everyone's got personal lives, families, wives, might be having a few issues there because he's probably a seven-day-a-week type of manager. You can see that with him. with him. He's probably booked a break away. We were talking about... Did he, does he need a break or want a break? I don't think he needs a break, Jurgen Klopp. I think he wanted one. And that's all right, but just say it, because no Liverpool fan on the planet is going to say you don't deserve one. No one's going to say you're a bad manager for mm. needing a break and to re-energise, re refresh. 
Just well, say well, it. Well, I think everyone knows it, don't they? Because mm. why else is he not there? There's, there's no other reason. Well, no, the reason he's not there, in my opinion... He's used, is, to, he's used he's, to a break himself as well in Germany. He's, saying, he's used to that. I think he's saying to the, the authorities, mm. I'm not putting up with this. And actually, I'm going to dig my heels in and say, no, I'm not going to the game. Because you, you've said have a break, and we're having a break. Mm. And I don't think that's the right reason for not being there. Well, they won. So, anyway, well, Doesn't done, matter. well done to Neil Critchley.